Oh boy, so this question has come up so much. Should you set up shop in China? Should you stick with your existing Chinese manufacturing partner? Or is it time to start looking elsewhere? So in this video, we're gonna be exploring this question and spoiler alert, there is no one size fits all solution. So we're gonna be digging into a few pro and pros and cons and things to consider when you're looking at setting up supply chain that will best serve you and your e-commerce brand into the next five, 10 years. So let's go. Hey there, welcome back. If you're new, I'm Kirsten. And on this channel, we work to help you scale your e-commerce brand on your own website. We cover things such as Shopify, launching new products, actionable strategies. If that is something that you are into, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss another episode. The last two to three years has taught us that with supply chain, increasing demand for more orders and factories getting shut down and a lot of the other global things that we've been handling in the e-commerce space have not been easy. But it's also begging the question of like, all right, well, if these are some of the problems we're facing now, what is that gonna look like in two to three years? And is China a viable market to continue to manufacture and, and go from there? The truth is China has dominated the manufacturing space in the last 30 years, um, really got started in 1970s, 1980s, where they laid the foundation to be the global leader for manufacturing. They've got the efficiency down, they've got the low cost cut down, and they have the capacity to keep up with mass demand globally. But the reality is that in the last two to three years, I don't know if you haven't been paying attention, here are some of the things we've gone through. We have seen increased wait times because to, f to really get product from China, what that meant for the existing um, store owner is that you will see your product sit on a boat and enter the port on the west coast of the US and then wait for them to check in your your items to then get ship, uh, get uh, trucked over to your 3PL to then see customer distribution. And in the, you know, before two years ago, that was humming along beautifully. We were able to anticipate that shipping times from China to be able to get from your factory to your 3PL to start shipping out was about three to four months. And so many store owners relied on that timeline to properly forecast inventory, to properly do cash flow projections. But guess what? All of that went out the window two, three years ago, when supply chain had some serious problems coming from overseas. Here are some of the things we've experienced. And if you have gone through this, please let me know below because I know this is one thing that caused so many sleepless nights for you. So in the now what we're experiencing is if you place an order with China, there's a few things going on. Um, number one, the factory might get shut down because a worker gets COVID, of course, safety first. Um, because they are so behind on larger orders because of potential of factory shutdowns and time off and that sort of thing, they now have to prioritize their larger customers. So if you're working with a larger factory and your small fish coming in, you are really just at the bottom of the priority pile. So even if you get a timeline from the manufacturer to say, yep, you know what, we're going to start in two months and you bank everything on that, unfortunately, sometimes larger orders will take priority. So actually it gets to the point where if you're with the wrong factory partner, um, you may not get product for 12 months. And we can't run a business off this because what you see is you are only selling when you have inventory and even pre-orders go so far. So let's say you finally get your order placed, your factory makes the good, they then get it on a boat. Excellent. So let's just say that that all goes well, it gets on a boat. The problem is now that the ports have been so backed up that your product can be sitting in the port for up to 12 weeks, which is mind blowing to me, but that's just logistics. It's unfortunately with increased demand, with wait times, with everything that's gone on because of worker shortages, da, 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 it has created this nightmare cascade effect so that so many e-commerce brands have either gone out of business or they've had to stop selling or parse their inventory to prioritize customers because they're just going to run out of stock. So with all this into effect, it has caused some store owners, several, to question whether 
overseas manufacturing if you're based in the US or tapping into the US market to see if that is going to be a viable solution for you moving forward. We have a few clients that have actually, they're in the process of moving from China to Mexico or from China to, to other markets that may be able to handle volume. So is the answer to not work with China? No, that's my opinion. The answer is it completely depends on your operations and how you see things moving forward. Of course, there have been problems with the existing supply chain, but this doesn't necessarily mean it's not an easy solution to say, oh, well, you should not work with China because honestly, they're still the leaders in the world. So let's look at some alternate solutions because on the surface, I don't think it's as easy as cut chains with China. Okay, so let's explore. Um, and go from there. First, let's look at a situation where you've decided to move away from China and set up shop in Mexico or Europe or other locations that better may serve you geographically better. Okay. So a few things that if we're looking at cutting down the time on the water, you may look to a manufacturing partner that's on your continent so that the variable you're looking at is just on land transport. Okay. That might be good. That may cut down delay times. Um, if you do that, that is one solution to reduced lead time. Number two, let's say you do move your factory operations or you do set up in a different country. Um, there's a big risk that your quality control or the quality, these factories won't be able to produce as high of quality as what China has. Because again, China's had over three decades to become the master of quick, efficient manufacturing. And there is a really good quality control network set up to make sure that the products that do come out of China, um, if you want them to be high quality for your brand, that is something they're going to do. But getting set up with a new factory in a new country when you know operations in this new country are still fairly new, they may not have the quality control set up and they may not be able to really move the volume or the efficiency that China can. So it is an unknown where we know what we're dealing with with China. We don't know what we're dealing with, with a new factory in a new country, unless if you have vetted them and you've worked with this existing manufacturing partner in the past. So something to consider. So in summary, if you're moving away from China, you're actually potentially you're taking a risk on will this new factory in this new country be able to keep up demand, keep up with higher order volumes as you grow and be able to pump out the quality that China can. That is something that, and of course there are ways to mitigate for all of this, but that's definitely some things to keep in mind. But on the other side, some of the pros of moving away from China might be that you want to be located closer to your factory for quality control. That might be something that you want to have um, no time on the water and you want to be able to um, do, you know, rely more on land transport. That of course has its own scaling logistical problems um, because if you are looking to scale globally, um, it's gonna be very hard to avoid the sea freight route. But again, these are, these are things to consider. On the flip side, let's look at the pros of staying with China. Number one, if you have the right manufacturing partner, you've got an existing relationship and quality control is there, they are one of your biggest assets in business, okay? So assuming you've got the right one or you vetted the right factory, they can be your biggest asset. As mentioned before, China has the largest factory network in the world. So with that comes greater efficiency, potentially lower wage costs, and your, their ability to keep up with massive order volume um, as we go. And so because of that, that is, those are some of the pros. China is a constant and it's something that if you take a little more time to find the right factory partner, that can really work. Um, other things to consider, if you do wanna stick with your Chinese manufacturing partner or look into that, if you're really concerned about lead time on the water and just things getting stuck at the port, what you can do, we have a lot of companies that are and this is not good for margin, but if you're able to uh, work out volume discounts or whatnot, that's a good idea. You can actually uh, air freight over, so you can fly over some inventory. So in preparation for Q4, when you're gonna make your largest inventory purchase um, of the year, uh, the last thing you want is for your products to get stuck on the boat for three months because, ah, guess what? That means you might potentially lose out on your biggest sales quarter of the year. So that's no bueno. But if you have, for example, if you have 25,000 units coming in from China, 
two things you can do. You can either um, ship 15,000 or so on a boat and air freight 10,000 so that you have inventory within days as opposed to weeks. So that is a known constant, but of course the cost of air freight is significant compared to a cost per unit shipping price on the water. So that is something to watch out for. Um, so staying with China is a constant. They are the best in the world at what they do and they are pretty affordable right now. Of course that might change in time, but that is right now um, what we have. And some of the um, things to watch out for, if you are looking to move away from China because of the time on water, I've just provided a solution um, for logistics. But at the end of the day, China is still a very viable market because you have good cost per unit, typically very efficient, the quality control network is there and existing relationships. So. I, for beginner brands, if you get set up properly through quality control, through a good relationship, and you can trust your manufacturing partner to deliver on time, then the problem that you need to, the thing that you need to be asking yourself is not what country should we uh, manufacture in, but more, how should we set up fulfillment so that we can get product to our customers? And so I wanna offer two solutions here. Number one, we've talked about air freight, so that's definitely a good solution. That's not so great for margins because it's super expensive to fly stuff over. Um, but the other thing you can do is talk to your factory and see if they are actually able to ship directly to your customers. So not all factories offer this, but if you're able to um, have a factory that with every order, they actually act as your fulfillment partner as well, that could cut down loads of time on the water because if they're shipping from China, sorry, if they're like, if they're taking packages and fulfilling to the US and other parts of the world, that is potentially part of the cost that you can pass on to your customers if you do charge shipping for your products. That is one way to significantly decrease lead time and it's a more popular solution that e-commerce brands are using to try to bypass the crapshoot that is shipping overseas right now and dealing with ports. The other solution is that you are only selling and only making money when you have inventory. So if you have a validated product, order way more than you need to. If you need to get cash flow financing, get cash flow financing. You are going to need as much inventory as possible because of lead times, and that is going to be the number one hidden killer of being able to grow your business is not having enough inventory. So cash flow financing, there are definitely a few options. If you guys are using one, by the way, let me know below which one you're using. Um, and apart from that, one last thing. So I just finished reading Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. It's the story of Nike and how Nike became one of the, actually, if not the global leader in footwear and apparel. Um, and one thing that was a game changer for Nike when they were going through serious cash flow, serious inventory, and serious scaling problems that come with growing your company and growing 50% year over year, um, what that looks like is that if you can decrease your number of orders, meaning instead of ordering 5,000 units at a time, look to get cash flow financing to order much higher volume orders so that you are decreasing the, the amount of uh, orders that you need to wait for to hit the port, hit your fulfillment center. So if you can swing it, cash flow is king. Uh, there, you know, cash is everywhere. There, if you have a proven product that has a proven track record, proven sales record, there are so many different ways to get inventory financing. And you need to, I know it's a scary thought. I can just, I've had this conversation with so many of you where I can just see the, the angst and the, the, the stress of, oh, I, I have to order more, more units. Yes, because it's the one thing that will give you a competitive advantage. So apart from that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if there's any part of this video that you want me to elaborate more on in a future video, let me know below. Apart from that, thank you for subscribing and watching, and I can't wait to see you next time.